fun. Um, okay, so hello and welcome to the podcast. Um, season three, I think we're on. Uh, season two was pretty <laughs> short lived. It was one episode long, but listen, it was a good episode. So that's what that's what makes it okay. Um, but anyway, so today I'm here with Michael from Notify. Uh, he does some other bits, but no one really talks about that because no one cares. Um, and then we've got Ops as well from Palace Spot, Shell Solutions, and he does loads of other stuff. And he's one of the probably the one of the most hot de- hyped um, up and coming devs there is at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's good to have them oh, on the show. Yeah, man, we love sure. you, here, man. Um, Why didn't I get an introduction like that? Because we don't like you like that, Michael. Okay, you have no oh, talent. Okay. Sorry, Michael. Jeez. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so firstly, Rush AIO. Um, so they've been facing a bit of criticism this week. Um, sort of mixed views, I think, and I think the views which they've been getting are warranted in a way. But I think also because well, okay, so background, background. So um, they dropped um, was it lifetime copies at one k a year? Is that right? Or oh, sorry, yearly copies at one k a year? Yeah, yeah, yearly. yeah. And or alternatively, hundred dollars a month. Um, obviously, yep. not something we've really seen before. Um, closest thing to it's probably like NSB at five hundred, sorry, five hundred dollars a year, or Dashi at fifty dollars a month, right? Um, so yeah. those are two of the closest things. Um, obviously, two bots with with a pretty strong track record. Like I remember NSB even before it came out of beta, it cooked loads for months. Months. Mm-hmm. Um, so by the time it came in, it was sort of like okay, five hundred dollars with discounts, whatever. You're generally looking around three fifty, four hundred dollars, right? Fine. Yeah. Um, Rush AIO, new bot. Not don't know too much about it. What are your thoughts about the pricing? Um, so personally, I think I think it's really good because I think we can agree that in general bot prices are pretty undervalued and yeah. that's evidenced by the resale market. Like bots reselling for such an insane amount compared to the retail. Um so this kind of levels the playing field a bit in terms of uh, the discrepancy between the two prices. Yeah. yeah. Um, and personally, I think a lot of bots may move to this, but I'm not too sure because even though Rush was quite new, it was backed by some people who've been in the community for a long time, like Don Jones mm. and NYC Sneaks. Yeah. And also, the developer, um, I heard that he used to do AI for BMWs, yeah. autonomous vehicles, and the average sneaker bot, the dev is like a 15 year old or 16 year old. Yeah, exactly. Um, Definitely. Cool yeah. Yeah. Which isn't so, necessarily a bad thing. I mean, they've obviously got talent to, yeah. to get yeah, like a lot of yeah. yeah. So I agree with Michael. I think that sneaker devs definitely are undervalued. And obviously, people use these bots to make way more money than what they pay for them. And that's why you see resale prices like 5K on some bots like yeah. Kodai, maybe Cyber. Yeah. Yeah. But I feel like there's also a factor of where it depends, like, which route they're using to make money. Obviously, I think the developer is really skilled, and he probably deserves to be paid a lot for working on this bot Hmm. after, obviously, leaving, um, what was it, Silicon Valley? Yeah, BMW. So I think it definitely is something that bots should look to, and... He deserves, like, if his bot works, honestly, he deserves the $100 a month or whatever. Yeah, yeah. But I also see the user side where, obviously, there's the $100 a month price point, And then you, you go, like, for the average user, there's, they're probably not hitting on the original drop. So they're going to marketplaces like Tidal or Botmart and buying copy for, like, 2000 Yeah, mm-hmm. And then they have to try and make that money back and a hundred every month. Yeah. So I, I see both viewpoints of why they're mad, but obviously it's all up to the developers. It's yeah. their bot. So Yeah, yeah, exactly. So I um I mean you obviously mentioned that bots like Kodai and Cyber, you know, hitting five K, six K, which is a huge number. Um, but it's obviously warranted following, you know, months of success. Um obviously Rush being a new bot, um, I think as in some of the views which I've seen on Twitter and elsewhere are that um, a new bot with little success, can you then justify that price point? And obviously the impact of having such a price point means that new users coming into the bot, coming into the Discord, um, they're coming in with crazy high expectations. And obviously a new bot coming into the scene sort of has to deliver to justify those expectations. So obviously you develop Palace Bot, um, and if you were Actually, to- I most of the development like is done by the other co-owner developer virus he's insane but yeah right. okay. that's yeah okay okay but if you were to then launch that product 
with that at that price point, how would you feel in terms of your responsibility to your users or in terms of their expectations of the bot? Yeah, definitely. So that's where this um, performance of Rush comes into play. Basically, if you're charging that, I feel like it's warranted. It just depends on you have to provide your users with consistent success. Yeah. And obviously, um, we all saw on Twitter, there's a lot of backlash after the initial drop on huge Saturday. Amount, huge amount, yeah. Huge amount, for sure. And I see that there's definitely a reason why people could be mad. I mean, we also saw the, the bounce back on the restock when they were able to secure, looks like, a lot of pairs on yeah. the finish line. Yeah, yeah. But if I was someone who purchased this bot for around, like, maybe $2,000 and... Yeah. On the first drop, I used this bot. I wasn't able to cop anything. I probably would be mad as well. Yeah. But yeah. it just depends on if he can, the developer can keep the bot consistent or not. Yeah, and I guess that's just the sort of trade off which comes with having a higher bot retail value. But um, I guess it sort of leads into the, the next question, which is bots going into the future, especially newer bots. So seeing a few pop up, and I think with developers sort of coming from professional backgrounds, such as, as Michael said, like Silicon Valley and BMW. Um, well, do you think that adds pressure to current bots, but sort of current bot devs who don't come from a professional background, to sort of be able to compete with these professional background devs who are then coming in and you know trying to take stock? Yeah, well, what I think about this point is that sneaker development is, in a lot of ways, different than development that many prof professionals do. Like, let's say you come from a job with a lot of experience, you still might have a lot of trouble in this sneaker world because most of it is kind of like reaction based. Like you have to look at a website, analyze it, analyze changes and all that. So honestly, obviously being a professional helps and that probably does put pressure on some of these younger devs. But if you're able to analyze sites and crack their protections, it all depends on like, what you see and what bypasses you can find, etc. So it just depends, really. A lot of it is also based on luck, you could say. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine it would be. Um, yeah, fine. I think that those are some interesting points. Um, yeah, I just think. I mean, I might be wrong about this, but I think most of sneaker botting is reverse engineering, right? Um, it is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and most industry professionals, I don't really think they'd be doing much in the field. Most of, of them don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's not necessarily an advantage, um, but I think generally, like an industry professional, it'll have a higher mm -hmm. uh, skill level than like. Yeah, yeah, they definitely have all those base skills they need yeah, to make exactly. this happen. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. Fair enough. Um, should we move on from Rush then and on to the next part? Yeah, let's go. On. Cool. Yeah. All right. So um, interesting one. So I've spoken to Kasim about this. He's cool with us discussing this topic. Um, but we've obviously got um, bot talk. Um, so we've got the introduction of Alessandra Lucia on the bot talk, and um, the sort of I says so there's been sort of like conflicting opinions. So there's been loads of opinions like Pap Smurf, um, Chegg, Kasim's obviously voiced his opinion on it. Um, but the problem that some people are stating is that this is someone who's come onto the scene sort of out of nowhere. Um, just been accepted because of who they are um, and just sort of been simped um, and given free copies of stuff and just sort of given a free pass whereas other people would have had to hustle towards that. Um, the other side is that, you're, is that by Kasim doing this he's giving um, people who wouldn't typically have like a platform to discuss these sorts of things or maybe I've not worded that right maybe more so some like a, a very underrepresented group of people um, hasn't been I'm, I'm wording this really badly but you know what i mean right so <laughs> no yeah we understand you basically yeah, yeah. um i don't think there's been a single like girl on the show i yeah. think that's his main point if we're really just getting to it yeah that's and great. i mean the bottom line is it's his um it's his podcast he can do what he wants i kind of understand what um papa smurf and some of these other guys are saying even though it might not be like in the most respectful way like, I understand that um, All Saunders definitely new here. And a lot of people, I guess, who, are, who, who they're saying are more like, uh, well, how do I say it, more um, worthy 
quote unquote of getting onto the bot talk are kind of being overshadowed by Alessandro getting on first. Mm. But it just it just depends on like Kasim. It's his it's his podcast, obviously, and I don't know what she's gonna say or yeah. what she's going to talk about, yeah. but I guess we'll just have to watch and see. Yeah, I think yeah. it'll be interesting to see. I think uh, from a view I've seen is that you can invite devs, you can invite um, group owners, you can invite people who sell proxies, who provide services, whatever. Um, but at the same, at the end of the day, these are categorized as group owners, as um, devs, as whatever. Whereas this is, this is someone who is categorized, you know, sort of, as a female, because a female hasn't been presented, like represented in any in in sort of any aspect of our industry, really. I mean, the only prominent female I can think of being represented in the industry is sort of is it Bicantha? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. 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 But they're literally the yeah. only ones. Like even like well, I remember when Sneaking I joined. Money as well. Yeah, exactly. But but it's it's weird that like well, I remember when I first joined like the scene and I saw Bicantha on Twitter, but. I never even suspected that she was female. I just always yeah, assumed yeah. it was just a bloke. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. I think it's just, I think in a way it is, it is good to have, to sort of force that representation so that there is awareness that, you know, this is for everyone. It's not just for one person. Um, do I agree with the fact that she's been simped by certain people? Like, yeah, maybe. Um, yeah. But... But like you know, <laughs> I, I mean, it is what it is, right? That's, that's that. That depends on the person, and if 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 whatever companies want to do that, then that's on them as well. Just as it is on Kasim to decide to bring her in on the show. Yeah, that's just kind of how it goes. It's their, it's their products. They can do what they want with them. Yeah. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. But yeah, um, people I also, seem to. I also saw mad. another tweet. Sorry. Um. Yeah, I saw another tweet as well. Where I think I can't remember who said it, but. Um, it was it was just the idea that Kodai giving her a key just allows them to access a demographic that they previously wouldn't have been able to access. And and to be fair, that's true. Like she's got a YouTube channel which does their own stuff. I've never seen it to be honest, but I've heard of it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, just through that, you're instantly um, getting the product out there to to viewers who may not particularly be your the sort of conventional target audience, but they are a target audience. And I don't um, particularly think there's anything wrong with that. Personally, or firstly, I think Cod I don't need to be getting like any more word or like. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. As well. And secondly, I think that is an interesting theory, but I think what is more likely is just that um, ecstasy, which I have no problem with. I think he's a really nice guy. Probably just befriended her and um, gave her the key, just as like a friend thing, not a like gesture, anything. Kind of yeah, not like anything to do with uh, tapping into new uh, demographic or anything like that. Yeah, That's I'll reach you so. Yeah. I mean, we all know Kodai is already extremely limited, and we can see by Teresa. Yeah. They're yeah. not. They're not some kind of like general lease bot. So I don't really think the marketing is really the big point of that. I I see what you're saying, but I definitely agree with Michael. It's probably just kind of a friend thing. I mean, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Mm. But. Yeah, that's what I think it is. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm not trying to be um, a simp or anything, but <laughs> if ecstasy <laughs> if, if gave a key to a male friend, there wouldn't be any backlash with them. Like, if yeah. you gave a key yeah, to me, that's be true. If you gave a key, a key yeah. to me, which you should, like, people aren't going to be crying on Twitter either. But yeah, but is that because you are a guy who um, is quite prominent in the community and oh, has? You. Done. I mean, I'm just saying hypothetically. I'm not saying you are, um, but oh, no. <laughs> you're joking. But I mean, it's, it's true. I've known who Michael was for way longer than he knew who I was. So, oh, yeah. oh that's, cute. that's cute. Anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> back on topic. So, as in, but so this is so that's the thing, Michael. So, as in, you are someone who has worked for companies. You have you have your own company. You own I don't know, like what twenty groups now or something. And then um, and, um, and and like you are some you are someone who's got a reputation, right? So if he was to give you a key or whoever was to give you a key, it's because you are someone who's prominent in the community and can probably offer something back or offer a, you know a valuable friendship back, right? Giving a key to Alessandra Lucia when she first joined the community was not particularly beneficial to them. Yeah, that's true. I mean? Whereas yeah. being giving you a key or giving I don't know like someone else who is a dev or whatever a key might be more beneficial for them but yeah we're sort of entering yeah, yeah, great territories um, there 
And I think people are like um, taking it as a lot, lot bigger of a thing because just because of the fact that it's Kodai. Obviously, Kodai, I guess you could argue, is at the moment the top bot if you look at a user, like their user base and their success for their user base. I think they have under 2K users or something like that. Yeah. So, like, maybe if it was a different bot, people wouldn't be as mad. I mean, I kind of see their viewpoint. Like, someone just got, like, a $5,000 bot for free. Mm. And you, if you want it, you'd have to pay, like, 5000 for it. Yeah. So I kind of see it. But, yeah, I'm not really sure what the theory behind that was. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, I definitely get what you're saying there about, like, well, people wanting it. Uh, because... 99% of people in the community are never going to get a code eye, to be honest. Like, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, and then here's someone, even disregarding the fact um, she's female, is just someone that's... It's just someone. Got, yeah, it's just got something that a lot of people want without really doing anything for it. Like, people build up months of success, build up um, profits yeah. to reinvest in, like, expensive sneaker bots, and then this person's just been handed on a plate. Yeah, like, basically. Um, which, yeah, I mean, and the reasons for that, it'll be interesting to hear Sawyer's opinion on this, or, or his, his explanation for this. Not that he needs to explain it, but, I mean, it, just for the sake of, you know, public interest. Um, yeah. But, yeah, I mean, uh, that's the thing. But but then, would is is getting someone like this a female... So, so is, getting, is getting a female a key? I love how I say getting someone like this, like they're like a, a different like, <laughs> a breed or something. Nah, if it's getting a fem- is getting a fe- giving a female a key better... <laughs> Like, is it is it a good thing to positive like you know that term positive discrimination, right? So, is it good to give her a key in order to increase representation of females in botting? I think that is one of the underlying questions. If that's the reason for her getting a key, um, it could be. But I mean, if we're looking at it statistically, it's not discrimination to say that very few um females are into the sneaker botting and sneaker twitter scene i know a lot of females are definitely into shoes that's not a question yeah mm-hmm. but when we get into obviously the sneaker twitter that we're in and the sneaker bots that we're in um i don't think it's it's just it's just statistics to say that there's pretty much barely any females in here compared to guys but is yeah. that so is that, a lot, is that not You're a saying... problem, though, that they are underrepresented? Because if they, as you said, they have an interest in sneakers, so wouldn't it therefore make logical sense that they, you know, would have an interest in the reselling aspect as well and the bot, yeah, and the bot aspect? Um, I think that's a fair point. I guess that could, that could definitely be a reason. Mm. I think it just depends on if they're actually interested, because I don't know if they're interested. I don't know if you know they're interested. It just... I mean, I don't know. I, I feel don't, like I don't speak they... to females personally, so... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, by the way, I'm joking, but... Okay, sure. Okay. Just to clarify. But please, yeah, continue, sorry. I completely ruined the moment. No, sorry, but... So, it just depends, you know, like... I guess you could say more females are represented by them giving her this bot and she, like, speaking out, obviously... I think she's hit a lot of stuff with Kodai. I mean, not surprising. Yeah. Because it's a good bot. Yeah. But it just kind of goes to show that anyone can do it. It doesn't really matter, like, who you are. Yeah. Just, I guess, actually, I shouldn't say anyone. You definitely need some sort of capital. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. as far after that, kind of anyone can do it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, personally, I don't think... Okay, I need to word this very carefully, but <laughs> I think representation within sneaker Twitter isn't really particularly important because in real life, positive discrimination is in place because people do have prejudices against um, women and certain yeah. races and stuff. Yeah, on sneaker Twitter, like that is pretty hidden away. Like a lot of people don't know what other people look like, and unless you've heard the voice, like there could be a female. You know what I mean? Like. Mm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, like, there's no inherent disadvantage to being female or anything on um, Sneaker Twitter. So representation is. Yeah, like, I think you're completely right. Like, if there, if I like, I wouldn't sell a shoe. Like, actually, wait, let me word this properly as well. <laughs> We're all trying to break the this episode, aren't we? God. So, like, it doesn't matter if someone is like 
I think Michael's right about the kind of online scene of this. It doesn't really matter like who who is like a girl, who's like a guy, like what color you are or anything like that. If you're it's kind of we're all here to kind of make money and have fun. So basically, if there was like someone um who is like going to benefit me in some way like a developer or just like staff or someone I wouldn't really look at like who they are just more of like what they do their work yeah maybe yeah. obviously what they're given yeah it's I completely agree that's business. definitely more important I think what you I think yeah I think at the end of the day it, it does as it should do in any working environment to be honest come down to what a person's actually like in terms of their character and what they bring to the scene so yeah, yeah I mean hopefully I, I, I'm interested to see what what this bot talk episode will be like I do want to listen to it and I think it I would I'd highly recommend anyone who's sort of had an opinion on this does listen to it because although you may have an opinion I think you just need it's, it's good to just to remain open-minded and just just listen just listen to what people say and there's probably a reason why she got into the scene um whether it be for money or for like searching for a community to be a part of or whatever but yeah definitely check out let's check out uh Kasim's thing when he drops it um, um yeah I think it's a great PR for Carson because, like, you know, like for his um... everyone's talking about it. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone's gonna watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um. So next topic is Kodai. Um. So we've also been discussing Kodai just now, but um, this is more to do with their sort of performance and, and resale value. So, sort of, probably the most important thing of recent times is that they overtook Cybersoul in resale value on Bot Broker, I think. I think, did it hit 6k, was it, I think, um, on Bot Broker, on the 6k dollars, that really? is. I think so. I think, I think it was like Kodai Lifetime or something. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I, I just remember overtaking Cyber, um, which is yeah. a pretty big deal. I mean, Cyber's been at, what, the top it of the game for, for, for as long as I can remember, to be honest. Maybe yeah. Hawk overtook it a little bit, but... I mean, Cyber's been on top yeah. for, for months, years, so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think to be like a top bot like that is, it comes down to consistency, which obviously Cyber's had for a super long time. And since they've had that, like, you'll never see, I don't think you'll see Cyber anymore for like $500, like it used to like years ago. Yeah. Because when you have consistent success like that, it's a it's a safe investment. So like it doesn't matter what people will pay. Yeah. You'll either sell the bot and get it back, or you'll use it and with its consistent success, you should make it back. So I think it's warranted. But as you're talking about, we're discussing Kodai and how it overtook Cyber recently. Mm. What I think about that is that it's definitely the way that Kodai is uh, working right now. It's kind of insane. I think. Their finish line module has been cooking really hard recently because I know finish line is pretty interesting because the way finish line works is that so developers can find like bypasses and ways to get past like their anti bot protections, which I think are like Akamai and Perimeter X, mm. and maybe there's other stuff I don't know personally, but basically, some of those bypasses, like when you buy on finish line with a bot. One bot may check out a bunch of pairs for you, but they'll all be ghost orders. I don't know how exactly it works, but then other bots will check out for you and they'll all like go through and like you'll get shipping and all that. And Koda has definitely been like basically I've talked to Sawyer before and Koda basically they work hard to instead of using a bypass, they just figure out how to generate cookies and all that stuff. And so that makes sure that there's no like ghost orders or stuff yeah, like yeah, that. Yeah. So people are making like tons of money by using Kodai. And so that's obviously why there's a spike in price. And obviously like they have um, under 2000 users, maybe even less than that, but, and they're checking out like what, like 30,000 pairs, like every drop, maybe more. Yeah. So at that point, I think their price is going over cyber yeah. is warranted for now. I guess, and I think there's just been generally like a massive shift in the past well, probably past a year or so, gradual shift towards. I think I've, I've spoken to a lot of people who used to bot Shopify religiously, and especially since like the forty nine stuff started happening, uh, happening, I know that a lot of them have sort of just been like, you know, screw this. There, what's the point in wasting resources, wasting time going for drops for a pair to drop? You know what, seventy pairs, eighty pairs, one hundred and twenty pairs, whatever. Um, and you know, to encounter countless errors when you can just run foot size. It's not particularly time. It's not hugely time sensitive. Like 
with with Shopify, like, everything's very specific. Like if you if you start a bit too early, like you'll get you you potentially getting proxies banned. If you start a bit too late, you're getting stuck in key. Like it's very sensitive. I think for like foot sites and and these other sites are sort of just you know plug and play kind of thing. So you just start your bot, and if you've got the right resources, you should generally hit. And I think that ease of use as well. I think that's causing a huge shift of people going to like you know bots which regularly hit and hit well on foot sites like Kodai, like whatever. Um, and that is sort of boosting the price of these bots as well as the sort of demand for foot sites grows grows higher and higher. I mean, what like two years when I first joined, I mean like foot sites was people knew knew it was a thing, and but but I think people focus on Shopify like this this whole yeah, foot site thing is has been a massive shift. Like I mean, you've you obviously noticed it as well. You've been you you and Char like cook foot sites a lot, right? As well. Um, actually, yeah. Well, recently, but it's a funny story. You might not know this, but this kind of goes into the fact of what we were talking about a little bit earlier of how anyone can do this botting thing. Yeah. Like, shout out to Shaw. This man, when I first met him, he had not used a sneaker bot. And this was 2019. Right. Wow. Now, like, and then he learned, like, so quickly. He figured out all this botting stuff. And obviously, yeah, you're right. We definitely moved towards foot sites, stuff like Yeezy Supply finish line all that stuff yeah because shopify just isn't worth like the effort and the money you put in like all those yeah. proxies that get banned everything like that basically what happened to shaw was that he he never really used bots before but once he started using them and figuring them out he just like most recently on this jordan 13 flame he just hit a thousand pairs on like that restock or whatever so it just kind of goes to show that anyone can do it doesn't matter and it also goes to show that Foot sites and finish line and stuff have definitely overtaken Shopify with time. Mm. And yes. bots that prioritize prioritize those sites will definitely be valued over other bots. Yeah, I mean it's definitely been reflected, you know, market values of plenty of bots now. I mean Ganesh just added it as well, and that's only improved the value of that as well. So definitely in agreement with that. Um, so Kodai the new king. That is a question. That is a question. Sure. I yeah, go on, Michael. Okay. Give us your opinion. Yeah. I think resale price, because I wasn't aware until um, Wash Cobbs pointed out that Kodai has less than 2,000 users. Um, Cyber has, I believe, around 4,000, 5,000. So yeah. Cyber have double the amount of copies and still have a pretty close resale value. That's quite impressive in itself, I think. Mm. Um, but, like, historically, I think. A lot of bots have like challenged cyber. Um, like NSB did for a few months. Yeah. Um, Eve did at one point. Eve did, yeah. Yeah, but no bot has like competed with cyber as long as Kodai. So I think it is possible. Yeah, you know? I mean, there's no question that it's obviously a top bot. Um, yeah, it's good at what it does, and and no one can you know really argue with that. Um, I feel like cyber's just just as a if we're not just talking about performance, if we're also talking about the brand itself, if we're talking about um, the prominence of the team, you know, um, the devs involved, the sort of how long, the, how long the bot's been there, how long it's performed and performed at a high level, um, I, I still can't think of any bot on the market today which is at, at the same level as Cyber. I think it's it's still at a level beyond most bots are able no, to definitely. Use consistently. You know what I mean? Like even when it went through tough phase and um, when was it this was like last this was 2019 i think between it was just before was it 3.0 dropped um i think for a few months before that it struggled on a lot of sites it struggled with checkouts but somehow somehow the prices still maintained they literally went down maybe like 10 percent in that whole time and i think yeah. that just reflects a lot of faith that the community has in the bot itself in the team which is behind it um yeah and I, I don't think that any bot can go through that same period and not go through a huge price decline. I can't think of no, anybody definitely. including Kodai. Because cyber branding has been like pretty insane. Cyber's branding is probably one of the best, if not like maybe the best. Agreed. Yeah. Bot brand. I agree, yeah. They do a really good job with that. And when they back it up with their consistent success, it basically means that they're, it's very, 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 very unlikely that you'll ever see their price drop down to those kind of amounts yeah yeah um i i do i do want more bots to sort of rise up to the level of cyber and kodai um i think it'll be i think the more competition there is the better it is for users because it gives everyone a bit more 
in terms of always watching. yeah yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah it'll be interesting to see especially because we've got a new a lot of new bots popping off now I think it's especially now with everyone's been on lockdown and stuff I think people have had a lot more time to sort of you know get into the grind and, and get stuff done yeah um, so yeah it'll be interesting to see what what the future holds for new bots especially um, talking of new bots we may as well just take a few seconds to discuss Palace Bot, if that's right with you, Wash. Yeah, that's all good. Cool. So, when did you start developing it? Um, when, when. So basically, it was I think it was it was actually like pretty recently around the Cinder drop, the Easy Three Fifty Cinders. Okay. Um, or maybe a little bit before that, but basically, I I've, I've always been kind of. I've always liked the shoe palace site because mm-hmm. a long time ago you could just do this thing, um, which would kind of buy timer. It wouldn't work a hundred percent of the time, but it would work most of the time. And like we've all seen the shoe palace timer, it's really bad. So basically, you would like replace the ID of a shoe with another ID, mm-hmm. and you'd add it to cart, and you'd re- like bypass the timer. Right now, that kind of doesn't really do anything. It just it still gives you the timer and all that, so it's not really worth doing now. Right. But so back then, I was like, if you can do this, you like, you probably could do a lot of other stuff to the site. So I kind of looked into it more because I was interested because no, like, no public bots at least had shoe palace before. Yeah. Obviously, I think Phantom has it now, but I haven't seen it functional for a bit. Yeah. But so basically, I started looking into the site, and um, there's a big issue with shoe palace in the f- past few months or like actually no it was the past few years where you, on payment you'd get a decline 99 percent of the time it used to be like a just decline even it doesn't matter what information you put in it was just their payment processor was so bad was that the main limiting factor to botting it then no that was actually the one that was the first there's two big limiting factors so i'll talk about the other one right after i explain this payment processor sure. thing so basically for this payment processor it was their payment processor was terrible like there was no way you had to check out you had to try check out like 50 times before you could successfully check out it would take like an hour to check out one cart so basically i looked into the site and just i guess i'll just kind of simplify it basically figured out a way to just kind of force the checkout to go through every time so that was the first step but then there was another issue of like the the replace id bypass not working 100 percent of the time and kind of just you have to just sit there and keep doing it until you get a cart okay. so that's when i met um a, the uh, another co-owner of palace bot there's actually three of us right um his name is um sades okay so basically me and him were talking because i figured out the bypass to bypassing the payment processor page and apparently he had the bypass to add to cart 100% of the time on shoe Nice. So basically when we started talking, um, we figured out that if we put those two things together, you can basically buy every single shoe on shoe Palace kind of. Sweet. You have like point. a whole system in place together. That's quite nice. That's quite lucky, yeah. I guess, that you both have yeah, different it's, things. Honestly, but... it's, that's what I was talking about earlier. This botting thing, it's, a lot of it's about luck. It's yeah. honestly, the, even the way I found that bypass was luck. Right. And then... I started talking to one of my friends. Um, he actually goes to my school. I didn't know he was that proficient in development because he actually owned a frenzy bot before. But at the moment, I thought like frenzy bot is just like clicking a button and <laughs> kind of like, yeah, yeah, like clicking a button super fast. So mm-hmm. that's what I, I thought. He wasn't that like, um, like advanced because he's he goes to my high school. Right. But then I started talking to him, and he actually knows how to like, like, reverse engineer like almost every protection like. To give an example on, so do you guys remember when Phantom had a shoe palace? It's just recently for this yeah, Royal yeah, Toe yeah. drop. So basically, after they added that, um, the shoe palace servers were not ready for that, and so they crashed, obviously. Yeah. But then when the site came back, they came back with Cloudflare and a couple other things. Right. So basically, um, the dev, his name is Developer Virus, he's on Twitter and everything. So basically, he just went back got in the lab you know and he just pushed out <laughs> pushed out up crack the whole cloud flare thing and push that update in like five That's minutes crazy. and then when we started using the bot we noticed that all our order numbers were like right next to each other no way. so like we were the we're only people buying the inside that's nuts kind of insane. that's nuts oh good for you yeah, guys so that's I'm kind of happy the whole, for you guys yeah that's good. That's so pretty much so. Is your shoe palace module still working at the moment then? Have you had much time to test it? Uh, yeah. 
I mean, yeah, we've been using on restocks and things. They've definitely, one thing I will say is they've added this thing called um, Cloudflare AI, which is on a lot of sites. Jake actually added, Jake from um, Acid yep. or AYCD, how, whatever you pronounce it. <laughs> he actually added it to their site because you guys remember when they got like docs or whatever or yeah docs sorry like ddos yeah yeah, yeah yeah and it crashed their whole thing yeah so they added it and it works well for them but basically it's pretty hard because every time you find a way to bypass it the ai just kind of learns reverses it in like five minutes yeah right okay so it's okay. it's definitely kind of hard but we're yeah we're still working with it yeah you know? i see so you're planning to sort of push major updates before like a, a an actual release then rather than yeah. consistently changing um, yeah, so that's definitely the safer way. If they are like reverse, I mean, patches each bypass like every time. Do you think there's going to be a time where it's like literally like almost impossible to um bypass? So it? yeah, I understand what you're saying. There's that it definitely gets harder, harder each time you figure out something new, and they just like clip your bypass or whatever. Yeah, but there are a couple ways to just not have to deal with it. Which kind of you have to sacrifice some things like speed and um, like speed and maybe how many like shoes you can add at a time. Because one thing is on our shoe pause bot, you can add six pairs of shoes at a time and check out nice. like, six at a time. Yeah. So basically, um, I can't, I don't think I can talk too much about it in detail, but yeah. there's ways where you can like sacrifice some things like speed to make it less detectable and do some other things too. It's like close to, should be close to like 100% nice. working. But hopefully we don't have to go to that and we can just keep, you know, like figuring out ways to keep it fast and keep it yeah, working. Yeah, out. yeah. Hopefully yeah. the longer you can keep it, keep, keep it, you keep the cloud fair in a situation where it's, you know, quite easily bottable. I guess that gives you more yeah. time to work with, right? So perfect. All right. That sounds good. And how old are you guys at the moment, if you guys don't mind me asking? The devs. Um, well, I'm 16. The, the, the developer virus he's uh i think 18 right and sades is um a junior in college i think okay awesome how do you guys get into coding um so like i'm actually not that much of help to like developer provider or uh, developer virus he's he does most of like the heavy lifting right and so um he basically i think he's been coding for a long time he just hasn't been like coding sneaker bots i guess so I see. when i i guess just courses when he was younger and stuff like that and just doing random stuff mm -hmm. whatever he felt like doing so cool yeah. uh, right i'm not obviously trying he's to... not a professional like the rush yeah yeah oh yeah okay. <laughs> but yeah i'm not trying to um simp you for a power spot key oh, but okay. like here we go find him <laughs> You can't know he's 16, and then knowing how That's much That's even worse, made. mate. What the hell? No, can't just... no. Okay, wait, listen, listen, listen. And also, he's always trying to simp you. They'll find out you're underage, right. and now he's even more excited. No, knowing how much you make off each drop with this bot at the age of 16 is, like, actually insane. Like, but I was just crazy. Um, please give me a passport key. fuck's <laughs> 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 sake. Isn't this no, guy was bash isn't the same guy who was bashing Alessandro Lucia earlier? What the hell was oh, right, going okay. on? Mate, no, I wasn't bashing him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Alright, cool. Let's move on. Let's move on. So, um, okay, this is a, we're sort of expanding now out of sneak Twitter, but I don't really want to take this too far because I know it's obviously quite a hot topic. Um, US protests, and let's try and keep it within the realm of its effects on sneaker twitter or yeah. all, all sort of sneakers twitter's opinions on it so um most notably today we saw um we saw virgil getting clowned for making a 50 dollar donation um was it warranted <laughs> was it not i don't know what do you guys think um i think that i was honestly i just think that i was confused because i don't know i don't know how much money virgil makes yeah or Obviously, people get mad at this is kind of a comparison. People get mad at like bil billionaires or millionaires donating like how much ever they do. Yeah, Obviously, you see people off. start beef over that every every single day. Yeah, pretty much. always. But the Virgil thing, I mean, he can donate how much ever he wants to. I'm not going to say anything like he should donate more or anything like that. But mm. I don't know, like, if you post that, I don't know. People are definitely going to complain. Um, I'm not sure if this is true, but. I think the entire, like, so I might be wrong on this, but I think the thing is out of context because 
someone told me that like the reason it was fifty dollars is like specifically a challenge where you like donate fifty dollars and then tag like five friends or something. Right, I um, see. Okay. That makes yeah. more sense, I guess. That makes a lot more sense. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I'm not one to like donation shame, but I assume he's probably got like more than fifty dollars. Least... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Definitely yeah. at least fifty dollars. But... I mean people are making the comparison that I think one of his paper clips costs a hundred dollars, so you know, that's a half a paper clip. But I understand, okay, I, I understand the view that if you're going to publicly post that you donated or did a challenge, whatever, $50 is not a significant amount. And he probably should have anticipated he would get clowned somewhat. Is it harsh yeah, to bash yeah. him for this? Yeah, I think so. Especially since, you know, it's a challenge. Like, now we've, to be fair, like now we, I've just found out that it's a challenge as well. And I'm assuming a lot of people didn't. So that may take away some of the backlash anyway. Um, but you know, each to their own, right? I mean, you can't bash someone for donating. If they want to donate, they can donate how much they want. Um, if they're richer, should they donate, you know, a higher proportion of their wealth? Uh, that's, you know, an argument for another day. But I think it's probably yeah. a bit harsh. I, I just I just think it's a bit hypocritical, to be honest. Like, the same people who are saying, like, who are always defending Jeff Bezos for, like, when he donates, not point not 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 one percent of yeah. his net worth. Yeah, yeah. They're always defending Jeff Bezos, but then Virgil does this. The media like goes crazy over it, and then he's like, then these same people are like bashing Virgil. But just to clarify, I do think uh, he should donate more. But yeah, it's not a necessary bad thing to not donate. Yeah, yeah. especially in this circumstance, that's fair. Um, Mark Jacobs, he made some comments. I can't find his. I couldn't find his post, but it was something along the lines of. Um, if it's like people are like destroying his door or something in the riots, which the riots, you know, people protesting is great by all means. Um, the argument is that if, you know, they've had hundreds of peaceful protests in the last decade and nothing has changed. And that's the reason for sort of a more aggressive protest this time. Um, it's unfortunate that you sort of see the videos and pictures or whatever. And it appears that a lot of the people who are involved in these um, sort of more aggressive, you know, like the looting and stuff, a lot of them aren't even part of the protest. They're just there taking advantage of it, um, taking advantage of police sort of being elsewhere um, and not being able to attend to protect stores and stuff. So mm -hmm. it's obviously quite sad that you're seeing that. Um, but basically what he was saying is that his stores can be looted. And although it's obviously unfortunate, uh, you can replace stores, but you can't replace lives, which is ultimately what the protests are about. Um, I think Virgil complained about um, he complained. He, I think he complained about like people rioting and destroying Round Two, which is Sean Wotherspoon's store. Um, for those who don't know, uh, but then oh, like, I think I saw that. Yeah, yeah, I think I saw that, yeah. yeah. And then Sean like commented on some people saying like, "Oh, we're sorry about your shop," and he was like, "Look, it's fine. Like lives are replaceable, but stores aren't." So, you know, you talk about Virgil fighting for a cause which Sean isn't really that care that, that concerned about, um, which is also quite interesting. But I think I, I think it's very difficult now to voice an opinion on this matter without say without sounding like you're on one side or the other. Um, yeah. which is tough, especially for people who are in the public eye, because you see like a celebrity or whatever and they t they tweet something or, or they'll say something on Instagram and instantly you've got a riot of people in the comments saying, oh, you're this and that, or you're racist or whatever. And I think it's quite harsh. I think it's quite harsh to, to bash people. Because I feel like a lot of people can say things like un and unintentionally seem offensive. Like I think even us discussing this topic now, or me just speaking about this for the last like two minutes or so, I think I, I, that it's possible that I may have said something which which I didn't sort of have the intention of saying in a negative way, which may have come across as that. Yeah. And, and I feel like it just depends on you know people's interpretation of it. Um, obviously, if I did say anything, then I I, I genuinely don't you know I, I, I try to take a neutral approach in all of my podcasts. Um, but yeah, I think it's good to keep an open mind for everyone involved in this. Um, yeah. Next topic, okay. So I should probably take the lead on this one because I hate them so much. So anyway, um, yeah, Offspring. So they did this. They they. they they wrote a comment, someone commented on one of their posts saying, um, you guys like, you guys backdoor to friends, whatever. And then, and then instead of saying we don't backdoor, or what they'll normally say as being, or what they'll normally say, which is like, um, yeah, it's none of your business, you prick, keep shopping our site. That's basically what they say. <laughs> um, um, they, they went and said, yeah, we can backdoor to whoever we want, friends or friends or staff or whatever. Like, like what is wrong with these people? What is wrong with these people? Like, you, you, you go get, you, you go about acting like you're, 
taking the moral high ground on everything, right? On, every, on literally everything. And then you see their stories, and if they, they do like they do these ask me anything on their stories, like every weekend or something. And people will literally ask you a question, like like a friendly question, like oh like like oh I wish I got a pair of these, or or like um or like when will we receive it? When will we be when will we be received? So I can't talk anymore. When will we be receiving um like confirmation emails for X, Y, or Z? And they'll literally reply saying like stop asking in or like stop asking questions like like we'll tell you when we want like what's wrong with you like these are clients these are literally people who are buying your product which you get for below retail value because you buy it wholesale from nike and you're technically reselling anyway so who are you to start bashing people for for doing all this for you know just asking simple questions um anyway that's that's my case over for i hate um, offspring and hey, michael sounds like you really like offspring to be honest yeah they're actually my favorite store i shop i shop at there i shop there for everything yeah it's great <laughs> I mean, I would ask Wash for his opinion, but he he doesn't have. I mean, he's you know he's from the US, so I mean, I don't know. Do you know much about Offspring there? Or? Yeah, I mean, I obviously know about Offspring. It's a lot bigger for you guys. Yeah, but I guess the whole backdooring thing that happens a lot here too. I guess more in stuff like skate shops, all that yeah. stuff here, yeah. more than. But the main point about that is we all we all hate kind of backdooring, but I don't know if there's. A way to stop it honestly yeah yeah i agree and i'm sure to be honest if either of us like on the store i'm sure we yeah. do the same thing yeah exactly like, yeah. yeah it makes sense it just you just hate to be the guy who doesn't get the who doesn't get the deal right <laughs> basically yeah. yeah but like the the mean customer support that definitely is not like, oh yeah a good it's not it's off, honestly if, if you read through like offspring comments and like and like they delete a load of like they'll they'll literally have like a discussion post right and then if if they see like a comment criticizing them, like they'll literally just like ban the person from ever posting again, and like they'll delete them from raffles and everything. Like like what's the point in doing like an open discussion if people can't voice their concerns? Like is that not is that not part of you know the democracy of I don't know I don't know anyway. Yeah no I agree that's definitely right. wrong. They do my head in man. I actually can't stand them, but whatever. Uh, anyway, yeah we're never winning a raffle by the way, Michael. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> forecast. Okay, so um, we've got some part. We've got some points here. Um, I've also got um, the final curry. He's going to do some some bits in a separate segment because he's currently away. Um, but yeah, I mean, would you guys like to talk about this yourselves? Um, oh. Yeah, sure. Let's go. So, what do we have here? Toru. I guess we can talk about Toru first. Cool. So I don't. I actually, I don't know much about Toru to have like an opinion on it. I haven't done much research or I've never had it, never used it. Uh-huh. But I think what I do remember is I can't I don't know if I'm right, so correct me if I'm wrong, but didn't it start out as some like um was it a supreme extension or Yeah. 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 I heard it was a pretty good supreme extension and then they moved into just supreme was it like requests or whatever, hybrid requests yeah. or something like that. They made a bot. Right. And now you said I think I saw they're moving into foot sites, are they doing anything else besides that or um, just foot sites and supreme. I think foot sites was like the main thing that's got popular recently. Yeah. Um, the thing about foot sites is it's definitely better than stuff like Shopify, but you're still gonna have a lot of issues. Like, there's a lot of issues with foot sites, like payment verification and all that kind of BS you have to deal with. Yeah. So, if we're talking about like resale value i don't know what it resells for right now actually but um so it's like 400 a few weeks ago now yeah went from like 400 to around a k i think in a oh in like a month oh really that's actually that's pretty impressive yeah the whole bot resale market is quite heavily inflated at the moment though i'm not gonna lie i'm not entirely sure why but you know i think I don't know why it seems weird to me, but to me it looks like kind of everything is inflated. Like every shoe, every shoe I have has gone up in price. Everything yeah. I bought shoes. I don't know what the cause of it is exactly, but I've definitely noticed that too. Yeah, have that you, that's really true. Actually, yeah. yeah. Have you personally? Have you guys personally been feel like you've been shopping more during lockdown than you were before? Uh, uh probably not. I mean, no. I guess yeah. Without shoes, I guess. Not it's probably the same amount, maybe less, because you're not really going out anywhere. Okay. I guess Fair you're enough. still ordering stuff online here and there. But I think people definitely are, especially with over here in the US. Yeah. Um stimulus checks and such. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably yeah, yeah. is affecting things to at least some extent. Honestly, yeah. I can't say for sure, but that's just mm-hmm. my guess. Yeah, the reason I asked that is because I, I don't know. I mean, I've spoken to a few people, and it's still a bit weird, but. I was, as in, I'm, I was quite surprised you both said you weren't because I was speaking to a few people who said they have been, including myself. I feel like I've been shopping a bit. Not like, I'm not significantly more, but like, I've, yeah. I've bought a little bit more. I feel like with more time on my hands, I feel like I can sort of look around and just think of things I might want to buy just, you know, out of boredom in some cases. Yeah, that um, makes sense. The boredom definitely yeah. probably triggers. A yeah. Bit. And with people having more time and stuff, I guess they have more time to buy, more time to resell. You see shoe prices, as you said, are going up as well, which increases you know, the reason for wanting to put as well, right? So, yeah, it's... Actually, I think you're right, because things like, if you look, things like, because of this um, whole quarantine thing and all that, I think you're right, people are shopping more. Maybe not us, but you see things like Nintendo Switches, you see things like yeah. dumbbell weights, yeah. you see things like like miniature pools, like reselling, because mm. people are buying them, like, so much, because... They're stuck in their house. Yeah. I think the boredom definitely has a factor to do yeah. with that. And that's why everything's going up in price and stuff. True. Cool. Um, so yeah, I'll what I'll do is I'll add the I'll add um Final Curry's segment here and then hopefully that'll be good oh. in the final edit. Can I just say one more thing? Oh sorry, um, please, Michael, please. I'd love to hear what you have to say. <laughs> Alright, shout out the boys at Soul oh, I like that, that's a really made a comeback, like with the addition of Hibbert and everything. No, um, please enough. give me a key. But, yeah. <laughs> you work for them. You literally work for them. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. How I'm many done, keys does this guy want? Okay. And uh, to be fair, probably genuinely they props to Soul for for him, but I rate I rate the hustle and it's it's been good. It's been good to see. Yeah, Soul's been good to me, man. It, yeah. You guys remember Yeezy Day? Yeah. Yeah, I got so many with Soul. Even though I think that was the first drop where Phantom really cooked Adidas like that, but I was using Soul at the time and it was crazy. So it's good to see it come back. Yeah, yeah definitely. they're probably yeah. gonna keep going pretty strong. Looks yeah. like. Yeah, and since Michael did a shout out to Sol, um, I would also like to do a shout out to Balco. Um, mm. Yeah, I love you. Oh man. yeah, you're my guy, man. I love you. I actually love you yeah. so much, bro. Yeah, give me, <laughs> give me a key, man. Thanks, man. Um, but yeah, yeah, you guys been hitting Shopify like crazy, dude. Honest, dude. The ma- this guy, hey, genuinely, I've I've worked with a few devs, right? Okay, and they've all been smart. They've all been smart, but Balco genuinely is next level. Like I've never. I know I've what you're saying. Dude, he's insane. Like he like there's a problem. He just fixes it in like a few like okay, the forty nine stuff, that was okay, that was next level tough, right? That was crazy hard to fix. It is tough, yeah. But he did it. He still did it. He's he's dude, dude the guy's insane. The guy's actually insane. And I feel no, I feel bad in the sense that the bot resells quite low still. Um I feel like I mean it went up, right? Yeah, I it's have gone alcohol. up. I think it went up, yeah. It has gone up, yeah. But I feel like part of that may have just been because every bot's sort of going up, as we said. Um Yeah, maybe. But as in, obviously the performance relates to the value, and the performance has been better recently, um, and it's it's great to see. I, th- I think Balco deserves a lot of a lot of credit um, for the work he does. He's incredibly incredibly smart. He's the sole dev on a bot which has like four modules now or something. So yeah, he's a mate. You called me a simp. What the fuck is it? <laughs> <laughs> Wait, okay, listen, no. I, I only asked for no, one key. No, good I job only asked for one key. <laughs> Alright, cool. Anyway, that's enough simping for one wait, day. Wait, wait, one more, one more. Oh, no. Right. <laughs> Watch Cox. Are you planning to release um, Palace Spot soon? Um, Alright, so Palace Spot, we're still working on it at the moment. Um, right now, we're actually doing um, UI stuff, attaching it to the back end. And honestly, we probably won't release it too soon because um, I want to add more sites before we do. Just so uh, we we have uh, we have Shoe Pals, Amazon, and I think Best Buy almost done. Maybe um, yeah. Amazon is pretty cool. You can buy those switches, pools, and like dumbbells and stuff. Nice. I was talking about earlier. That's pretty cool. <laughs> but yeah, so I want it to be kind of bigger than just Shoe Pals. So we're yeah. gonna do that first. So yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure about pricing, time, or anything like that yet. Will it be a hundred dollars yeah. a month? Um, no, no, not. <laughs> that was golden. I mean, question. there's nothing wrong with that, but yeah, I mean, to be fair, not. you also didn't say it would be less, so you know, we never oh, know. yeah, no, yeah, I'm charging five thousand dollars a month, dude. Steal, <laughs> <laughs> let's go. Oh man, all right, cool. Anyway, I think, I think we've done all the topics, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, all right. Um, as always, appreciate Michael being here and Wash Cops. Thank you for appearing as well. It's thank been you. great having you, man. Thank you.
Okay, so uh, this week's going to get into the sort of the bot flipping segment kind of thing. I thought it'd be quite cool just to add um, into this season of Botcast. Um, so we've got Final Curry with us. Hello, Final Curry. Hello. Um, do you want us to refer to you as Final Curry or Curry Master now? I wasn't sure. No, I really care. I kind of go by Curry Master. So okay. Curry Master is fine. Let's run with that then. Perfect. Um, yeah. Okay, so um, I asked you to sort of come up with three bots you think are going to sort of go up in, in value in the near future or sort of at present. Um, which mm -hmm. which three bots do you think they are at the moment? The bots that I, I have my eye on right now are um, Toru, Polaris, and Kodai for uh, the Zion release. Okay, and why do you think those three bots have the most potential? Well, Pol Polaris has been steadily going up just in general just because of its special mode, and it's been absolutely destroying like every week. And as someone who used Polaris last time, its special mode like, is it's magic, just how quickly it's able to get through queue. So that uh, should be really good. Toru, everyone has their eyes on uh, Toru right now because they've just been destroying foot sites and they also announced their um, new 1.0 update and they've kind of been talking about it. And so you saw it shoot up from like 400, 500 to like 1,000. It's over a grand now. Yeah, and then yeah. Kodai, just because it is obliterating. You see people like who got Kodai who like before uh, were hardly getting like five, six checkouts, getting like, thousand clips today it was yeah. absolutely insane on the on the finish line restock plus it's really good on foot sites so i think i think kodai should do probably the best of any bot right now awesome and do you have your eyes on any sort of up and coming bots at the moment which you think might be sort of you know big shakers in the community obviously so you mentioned toru um are there mm -hmm. any others at all i'm kind of looking at ophelia which okay. has been around for a while that's the eu bot mm -hmm. um and just, I, I bought it and I no longer have it because I didn't think I'd be able to use it very much. But it's very interesting. It's just like, it's a super beta, super beta bot um, that has just, it really low-key cooks um, EU drops. It has, it's one of the very few bots that supports like Star Cow and stuff. It has SVD and all that. And I, I don't know, I think it's super interesting um, yeah. for, it's, uh, it's just, it, it looks like an awesome bot. I think that should come up. Yeah, and how much can you pick up for sort of around at the at the moment on the market? Do you reckon? Uh, you can pick it up for, but like it's bit, it went up a lot recently, but probably around a hundred and twenty euros. Okay, that's the steal actually for a bot yeah. in today's climate, right? Yeah, well, it's a beta bot, so you're gonna have to pay retail once it goes paid. But it's actually it's it's a really awesome bot. Awesome. All right. Thank you so much for your thoughts and comments. And um, if any if anyone sort of like groups or stuff are looking for someone to do bot flipping. Um, you've got Final Curry here. I'll put his at in the in the tweet and in the YouTube description as well. And definitely check him out because he comes up with some awesome bot flipping suggestions. So thank you again. Thank you for having me.